Now we're going to talk about the multiplication property of equality. And this is another technique for solving equations. So think back to the board that we looked at earlier. This is a board that's balanced in the middle and there's a stack of bricks on each end. And it's perfectly balanced. These stacks are the same size, three bricks in each stack, and they're the same distance. Now think about multiplying. Let's take the stack on the left and multiply it by two. So instead of three bricks, there are six. So we just multiplied this side by two. Well, in order to keep it balanced, we have to also multiply this side by two. And the key idea here is that as long as we do the same thing on each side, then it will stay balanced. And this idea can be expressed mathematically. And you can write this in your notes. Write this. If A equals B, so think of this little equation right here as the board. One side equals another. We have a left and a right side, and it's balanced. The two sides are equal. If A equals B, then A times C is equal to B times C. And look at what we've done here. We've taken this little equation, A equals B, and we've multiplied both sides by the same thing. And that is the key idea. As long as we do the same thing to each side, it remains, remains balanced. The left side is still equal to the right. And this, this right here, this is algebra. This is a course in pre-algebra, but one of the goals here is to introduce you to algebra. And this is one of the fundamental algebraic concepts, that you can multiply both sides of an equation by the same thing. Now let's apply this concept to solve an equation. Here's the equation, 3x equals 24. Now you can probably just look at this and immediately see that x has to be 8, because 3 times 8 is 24. So x equals 8 is the solution. But this technique is important to learn. Understanding this technique will help you to solve equations that are a lot more complicated than this down the road. So just follow me on this technique. I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to multiply both sides by the same thing. Watch this. I'm going to do 3x times one-third equals 24 times one-third. So I multiplied both sides by one-third. Now on the left over here, let's rearrange this. Let's do one-third times 3x. And on the right, 24 times a third. Remember the fraction bar means division. So this is 24 divided by 3. That equals 8. And over here, the one-third times the 3 Remember, those are reciprocals. 3 and 1 third will equal 1 when we multiply them. Any number multiplied by its reciprocal will equal 1. So that 3 and the 1 third basically cancel each other out. And that's why I chose 1 third to multiply by on each side. So on the left side, after those cancel out, we're just left with x. And we get x equals 8. So my thought process here, this was 3 times x. I want to solve for x, which means I want my final equation to be written in this form. x equals something. So I need to get rid of this 3 just to get the x by itself. So right now this 3 is multiplied by the x. I get rid of the 3 by multiplying by a third. And whatever I do on one side, I have to also do on the other. So I multiply both sides by one third. Now let me show you an easier way, I think an easier and quicker way to think about this. Rather than multiplying by a third, I like to think of this by, as a problem we solve by dividing. So this is three times x. I can divide the left side by three and divide the right side by three. Multiplying by a third is the same thing as dividing by three. The key idea is that I do the same thing on each side. Whatever you do to the left, you also do to the right. And I divided by three to cancel out that three, leaving me just with the x all by itself. And on the right, 24 divided by three is eight. I think that is a quicker and easier approach rather than multiplying 
by one-third, just think of dividing by three. Those are really the same thing. Division um, can always be thought of as multiplication. Dividing by three is the same as multiplying by a third. In this case, the division is a little easier way to think about the problem. Now let's look through a few examples that use this concept. And these first two up top here involve negative numbers, but that's okay. The same technique applies. 7x equals negative 42. I can get rid of this 7. This is 7 times x right there. I can get rid of the 7 by dividing by 7. And whatever I do on the left, I do on the right. So over here, the 7x cancels, the, the 7 cancels the 7, and I'm left with x equals negative 42 divided by 7, which is negative 6. Okay, over here, similar thing. This is negative 5 times x. So in order to get x by itself, I need to get rid of the negative 5. And this negative 5 and the x are multiplied, so I get rid of the negative 5 by dividing. And if I divide by negative 5 on the left, I divide by negative 5 on the right. On the left, the negative 5 and the negative 5 cancel out, which was the point. That was the goal, to get those to cancel out. I'm left with an x on the left side. And on the right side of the equal sign, I have 35 divided by negative 5, which is negative 7. Okay, over here, 1 fourth times x equals 12. I want to get x by itself. I'm trying to solve 4x, so I need to get rid of the 1 fourth. And I can get rid of the 1 fourth by multiplying by 4. And if I multiply by 4 on the left, I multiply by 4 on the right. And on the left, the 4 and the fourth cancel out. That's just equal to 1. 4 times a fourth is 1. So on the left, I have 1x. And you don't even need to write the 1. Just write x equals 12 times 4, which is 48. And the, the, the same approach works on this one. 1 ninth times x equals 8. So I multiply by 9 on both sides. And on the left, the 9's cancel. And I'm left with x equals 8 times 9, which is 72. And in every one of these examples, we used this fundamental concept of algebra. And that is, whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. And let's look at two more examples. And these two examples show that sometimes we need to simplify a little bit by combining like terms. See the 3x and the 2x? We'll do this first. We combine the 3x and the 2x before we do any multiplication or division. So 3x plus 2x, of course, is 5x. So I'm going to take this equation and rewrite it like that. This is mathematically equivalent to the line above. I've just substituted the 5x for the 3x plus 2x. Now this equation is a little bit simpler, and I can solve this with the technique we were looking at. I'm going to get rid of this 5 here. This 5 is multiplied by that x, so I get rid of the 5 by dividing. And if I divide by 5 on the left, I divide by 5 on the right. So those 5's cancel out, and I'm left with x equals 20 divided by 5, which is 4. And over here, this is similar. 4x plus 3x gives me 7x. So I take this equation and rewrite it as 7x equals 56. And then the 7 and the x are multiplied. I need to get rid of the 7, so I need to divide. So I divide by 7. And if I divide by 7 on the left, I also divide by 7 on the right. And the 7's cancel, leaving me with x on the left. And on the right, I have 56 divided by 7, which is 8.